What's up and welcome to episode, I believe it's episode 12 of Mastering Obsession. Today's going to be a solo episode with me and I got a lot to cover. We're going to go through today when I open the docket right here, ranging from freelance, some key takeaways on LinkedIn that we went through through an interview process that we just are wrapping up right now. And in addition, we're going to finalize this podcast episode talking about the power of business automation. Um, I have some insane stats that you're going to want to see at the very end that really break down why you need business automation. Now, before we do that, uh, I'm going to start off with some crazy just personal updates about what's happening with DevSlips, the vision that we have and where we're going. First and foremost, I'm coming back from Fort Lauderdale. I spent the past week there from Thursday through Sunday scoping out some apartments, scoping out places to go because that's where I want to build our next strong kind of little mini satellite office. I'm looking to hire for a lot of people out of there. And it, it, it's this really fun process because I'm looking through what the future has. And it's funny, we have Denver, we have Fort Lauderdale, we'll eventually expand to other, other cities. But I think about this process of what the journey's like. And I, I, I want everybody here that's listening to really take this home because unless you have a vision of where you're trying to go, you're not going to be able to get there. You have to have VPO. You have to understand your vision. You must have a plan to execute on that vision. And then you need to be mindful of the obstacles you're going to face along the way. If you're not aware of what those obstacles are going to be, you're going to get stumped every single time by, uh, by, by fear, by laziness, right? Those are real obstacles that are internal that are going to get in our way. Then there's external ones, right? There's the external ones of, I have tried to apply for this loan and it didn't work, or I tried selling to this client and they said, no, there's going to be these internal and external things. Now going into the rest of this podcast, going into this entire podcast in, as a whole, if you don't have a vision for where you want to go, you're going to be lacking. And most importantly, you're going to look aimless, to future employers. And that's what we're going to talk about here in just a moment, the power of that. But before we do that, I'm going to transition over here because I want to talk about a really interesting interaction I just had with somebody on uh, on Discord. And this is the coolest thing I love sharing with y'all to show the opportunities that are really available to y'all. Um, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to this. Now this is for one of our students, Andreas. And he just said, I want to thank you for setting up that hackathon. Since that, I've been reaching out to people who don't have an online presence and basically selling myself. And so far, I have three leads that actually had business meetings with yesterday. And what I can do for my client and how I can help them build a website. And hopefully, they accept that I can help them. I told him to send me some screenshots. He says it was in person, but I explained Upwork. And if they decide to go with me and you get the contract on Upwork, he says he's going to send me some screenshots. Now, I really want to go into detail on this is this aspect of social proof. So when you're going through this process, you're applying to jobs, you're doing all these things for yourself. You need to understand the way that you stand out to freelance clients, the way that you stand out to employers is heavily based off this aspect of social proof. If you don't have social proof, you don't have authority. So what that means is does your LinkedIn have recommendations from people who are reputable in that field, meaning they've been working for within that field for three to five years, they're senior level, they're any of those things. If you don't, you need to start networking and trying to find those ways to get those connections. See, the way that we help this client in this circumstance navigate this scenario, see we did this by the way for a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of students, is we come over here to Upwork. We're actually gonna start with, uh, Go to the bottom here. We're going to go to the bottom here. We'll go with the winning team that we had. So what you're going to see with the winning team here is that the way that we really help them out is their Upwork profiles now show this information. It shows that Clinton, a web dev, React, TypeScript, Firebase, WordPress, he earned $45 an hour. He earned $500. And it shows our review of him. Clinton excelled in the website and CRM automation project, demonstrating improved quick learning and proficient use of Go High Level. His significant contributions were pivotal to his team's success, highlighting his strong problem-solving abilities and technical experience. Outstanding work, right? So 
the reason this is important is that if you're in the interview process, you would have to compete against people that have these type of third party reviews on their profile. Now, imagine once Clinton racks up four to five of these, you're not going to stand a chance. Why? Because he has social proof. A great example of this really comes from the dating world, right? So if you see a <laughs> an average looking guy surrounded by beautiful women, it is proven that other beautiful women would be more attracted to that guy because they're thinking, okay, I know he's not the most attractive, but there's a reason other people are around him, right? This is a bias and an inherent clock that's been or inherent trait that's been built into us that we can kind of hack and take advantage of to make ourselves really stand out. And this is one of the things that you have to do in the interview process. If during the interview process, you have a vague resume that really doesn't show what you're capable of, and it doesn't have any third party proof that you've done what you've said you've done, you're not going to be able to have any success. And by the way, I'm going to speak to that much, much more in detail. And the way I'm going to speak to it is about the interview process we just went through. I'm even going to show you the thousands of resumes that we got. Uh, going on to Alexander, right? He put 15 an hour. We shouldn't have put it for 15 an hour. This is a really bad idea. We should be putting around 45 to 50. But putting that besides that, right? Another great review. We go to Brennan, right? Over $500 earned. Brennan has actually completed one job. He has another job below here right? Which is pretty sick that he got help with. We go to another one with Damien. Uh, this is pretty bad. We definitely don't want to do this, but he's obviously not in the job search right now. But these are real students that were able to uh, get some reviews on their profile. Then these are all the students who didn't win, right? These individuals did not win, but they did gain the ability to have some success, right? So I think this student, you can see here some completed projects that they've done, this is so crucial. You see here, they've had a total of five jobs. They've earned over a hundred bucks. We go to Arnold, we go to Eric. This really continues on for quite a bit. So you see all the different students that we have hired and how much they've earned. And now they have a little bit of a baseline. So Clayton's is a great example right here. He even has this, 100% job success. That's massive. When you have small things like this, this is what helps you stand out. Um, dog, wa dog washing website and React. Got a hundred bucks for doing that project um, on, Mar on March 8th. That's really neat. This one, January 15th. We're seeking 85 to participate in this, this website test. Yada, yada, yada. Right? You can see that Sam right here is actually a rising talent on Upwork. That's pretty cool. Right? And you get to see more and more of their abilities. And you can see this continues on with all the different students we have. And this shows the power of having that social proof. So the big part I really want to hit home for you, and we're going to transition to the power of business automation one more time for you to start gaining a deeper knowledge of the impact it has for businesses, the impact it has for you on that business and how you can sell them multi-thousand dollar packages um, following a closer framework we'll talk about later videos. But most importantly, just understanding the exact packages you're going to be selling those clients, uh, which, by the way, we teach directly with Dustin and with Rakeem and all of our freelancing calls and our new curriculum that's coming out for our BizOps Engineering. Now, what I want to transition to now is <laughs> two stories that I cannot believe happened. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the brief rundown. Uh, I'm, I'm going to open up LinkedIn while I go through this brief rundown. So we put out a job posting because we're going to hire two new mentors here at DevSelps to take care of our students. Now, we're looking for individuals. We did not want to hire anybody who's in a growing role. We needed individuals who were ready to be pretty much they're on boots on the ground, ready to roll from day one of the job. We do not have time for them to learn on the job. So what we had to do is we had to kind of go out of our way to really make sure that, uh, sorry, no, I'm pulling up the job because I want to show y'all just how many job applications we got to these jobs. It's absolutely insane. Uh, projects. Look at archive projects to Fort Lauderdale. So I'm going to show y'all here real quickly just to give y'all an idea of just how many job um, applications we have. So I'm going to screen share right here. 
So you can see here, this one we got 657 applications. The next one that we got, we're gonna go back. Uh, projects, we'll look at this one. We got, I think it's around 1,100 job applications. So understanding that, and these all came in a very short period of time. So I wanna talk about what I learned in the interview, massive mistakes that I saw that I don't want you to repeat, both in the freelancing process of selling yourself and when you're actually applying to jobs. So when you get over close to 2,000 applications in a very short period of time, what I need you to understand is from a business owner standpoint, how do I go about the process of looking at looking at all these interviews? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that they have all the required job skills. Uh, next, I'm gonna look at their profile, and I wanna see when they design their resume, did they make sure that they have a resume that is directly applicable to this job, right? After that, what we do is I message each and every one of them, and I gave them a message that said, hey, essentially, hey, we're looking for these things, we're looking to make a hire by next Wednesday, I need to know explicitly, do you have experience with React, for example? Have you been doing it for over three years and how uh, good are you at it, for lack of other words? And so we take everybody through this initial filter. A lot of people applied for the jobs and they literally clicked a form that said, I have these skills. And when you, <laughs> when you interview them further, they obviously don't have it, right? They're brand new, they're junior level, whatever. So we interview our first two job interviews for this. We're with two individuals who had over 10 years of experience in this industry. They had a lot of experience. One of them had 20 years, one had about 12 to 15. So we're sitting down, we're speaking to these guys. The first guy we speak with, um, he, we, we essentially ask my CTOs with me, we start asking, hey, so tell us about your experience with coding. Uh, tell me about your experience with React. Do you have experience with it? And they would say, yeah, you know, I have experience with it. Then we say, great. You know, can you answer this question relating to uh, React? Or can you describe how you would teach this or anything along these lines? And we were finding that these individuals with 10 to 20 plus years of experience, what they're doing is instead of saying, hey, actually, I don't have direct experience with LinkedIn or with LinkedIn, with React, but I do have direct experience with this over here. And here's how I translate it. And here is how if I got this job, I would uh, ramp myself up to be job ready within two weeks of starting. Nobody was saying that. Nobody was. What they were trying to do was fail in the moment to essentially lie to us. And if you're somebody who's getting really discouraged because you're seeing all these jobs with thousands of applicants, the first way you stand out is by understanding that a lot of employers, if they're not hiring junior level devs, they're needing somebody who can be job ready off the bat, right? So if you are maybe missing one or two skills, you need to be prepared for how am I going to answer this when they say, we need people job ready right now? How am I going to tell this person? Here's how I learn a new skill. Here's how I ramp myself and here's how I get myself immediately uh, practical and pragmatic and helping the company within a 30 to 60 day ramp up period. Because frankly, after speaking with a lot of project managers, a lot of product managers, they're finding that entry level devs sometimes are useless for around a year and a half. So how are you going to stand out in that interview process and say, here's how I'm gonna be ready within 90 days to six months. I have this support system, I've approached learning in this format, I'm comfortable asking questions, whatever it is. So the first gentleman who had 20 years just obviously melted on the spot. And the reason why he melted on the spot was not because he's bad at interviewing. I don't buy into this idea that people are bad at interviewing. Um, it's the same thing as I'm a bad test taker. No, you're not. You just don't know the answers to the quiz. Anxiety hits all of us, right? But the reality is when we're, getting, when we're talking about job interviews, we're no longer talking about school, right? In school, you could pass with a C. In job interviews, you have to get an A or you have to get them more willing to take a risk on you than not, which means it is a pass or fail. And if you fail, you don't have a job. You can't pay bills. So I'm gonna treat this much more intensely, much more seriously, because I care about you getting that job. So when you're going through the interview process, you don't have time to not know what you're doing, right? I don't care if you interview bad, you should still know what they're talking about. Even if that means, hey, that's a great question. Would you mind giving me just a moment to think about that? 
boom, problem solved. And the fact that these individuals do not have that capacity doesn't scream to their ability to be good teammates because they obviously do not have good communication skills when under stress. The second individual said that he had been a software engineer for forever, right? And by the way, I have a story about this guy that you're not going to believe. And he's doing something that's going to harm so many people. And it, it made me think about the impact AI is going to have for job searches in relation to people getting hired. Long story short, it's not good. AI is going to hurt a lot of people when they're trying to get hired. So this gentleman comes in. He applies to the job. We speak with them briefly. And we say, okay, you know, tell us about your experience with React. Well, actually, let me show you what I built over here. So he opens up this app that he built. And he's like, how cool is this? We're like, this is fucking sick, to be honest. We love it, right? This is cool. Now tell us, was this built with React? No, it wasn't. It was built with Vue. Okay. Can you show us any projects by chance that you have with React? Because obviously, this is a React position. We, you, we need to know that you're going to be able to use React from day one. You'll be able to coach people. And he said, okay, let me show you this project. He opens up a second project. We look at the second project. It's this really cool AI job application app. Um, essentially, it goes into your LinkedIn account and applies to hundreds up to thousands of jobs. Cool, right? We ask him again, since it's built with AI, hey, did you use React to build this? No, I didn't. I, view, I used Vue.js. Okay, that's twice now. We, we, we doubled down. We tried giving you a chance to fix this. You didn't fix it. We're trying just to ask you if you have this base level experience. You said you do. We're trying to see code where you use React. You're not helping us out any. What the fuck, man? Like, we're trying to help you here. Because you seem like a really smart guy. So we push them a little further. Okay. These are all sick apps. If you got a question about XYZ with React, how would you handle it? Well, I would need time to think about it. And, you know, I obviously wouldn't get an answer. I need to go look at documentation. Is his response to us. And we said, okay, well, <laughs> I understand that. But at the same time, you don't have time to do that if you're a mentor. You need to be able to answer immediately on the spot. You need to know that you are an expert at this. You can't say, oh, I need time to think about that. No, you're a professor. You're a mentor. You're a senior mentor. You have to be great at what you do. And his response was, man, it seems like, honestly, I've showed you all some really cool stuff that I've built. And you consistently are asking these dumb questions. By the way, I have the entire thing recorded. He actually said, you guys keep asking me these dumb questions about React when I've shown you what I can do. And we said, what are you talking about? And then Peter uh, stepped in and he said, hey, real quickly, did you apply to this job through that app that you built? And he said, yes. And immediately where my head went to was, this is what's going to happen. All these employers are going to be putting out job searches. And what people are going to do more and more and more is use these third-party apps to bulk apply to jobs and inherently water down the entire job application pool. So you now have to ask yourself, not only are you competing with people in the past who had to manually apply, now you have people applying with AI by the hundreds to thousands and essentially removing your ability in totality to get seen. So it's just getting flooded now by useless, terrible applications by people who have no means applying. This guy is a perfect example. He didn't spend any time looking at the actual requirements. He openly lied to us about his experience with React, and then he insulted us. Now what this does is it gives a bad taste in the mouth of that, in that individual leading into the next interview, right? And then what's really interesting is um, we had an interview afterwards with two other gentlemen uh, one who had about three years of coding experience, one with about a year and a half to three years as well. And both of them were remarkable. Their soft skills were amazing. They're wildly humble. And all they cared about was working with people. They loved the idea of being servants. They loved the idea of serving people, coaching people, helping people. They loved it. It was part of their DNA. Did they have the software backgrounds the previous two had? No. But did they show a willingness to learn and that they were job ready with React? Absolutely. They definitely failed a couple portions of the interview process. But putting that to the side, they were ready to fight. And guess what? We are willing to potentially invest in these two guys because of their willingness to really put their neck out there and say, hey, I, do, I don't know this, but I do know that. I didn't describe this poorly, but here's my overall idea for it. 
that is the coolest thing in the world to see from an interviewing standpoint. So it's so crucial as you're sitting back and you're listening to this podcast, you're thinking about how do I get that vision for my dream future? How do I build that career where I can earn $150,000, where I can work from home more, where I can see my kids more, where I can build that freelance business, where I can build that dream app that I want to turn into a business and be a real problem solver, right? Uh, to be an entrepreneur, whatever your goal is, you have to set that vision. Then during the plan and obstacles, you have to prep that it's idiots like that that are helping or getting in your way because they're just clouding and muddying all the water. So how are you going to stand out? And the way that you stand out and what we're going to transition to now is the power of that business automations aspect. I talked about this in the last episode and I got some heat because I said your website portfolio project doesn't fucking mean anything. It's useless. Being able to build a stack website is so dumb in 2024 and onwards because it's such a useless, easy task that can be built by a million other softwares. You need to be a problem solver. It's the only way you're going to be able to go out and get a job. So if you are not evolving in how you think you're going to solve problems, you're not going to get anywhere. So the way that you stand out is really transitioning to understanding these stats that we're going to go through. And we're going to be looking at, this is a report that came out this year in 2024. And he said 30 stats that show, let me show my screen here, 30 stats that show why companies need business automation. Now, this is going to be a key aspect for anybody that's looking to get their dream job, getting into business automation, both with a, on the custom dev side, as well as no code solution side, it's going to be beyond valuable. So we see here in some stats that I highlighted. A 2020 global survey by McKinsey & Co. stated that 66% of businesses have piloted the automation of business processes and one or more business functions. That's a big jump from 9% from 57% in the previous year of 2018. So we're seeing this number going to 66 from 9%. That is big. And by the way, these are key stats you can use when pitching to clients. Data and analytics have become the most essential for digital transformation. By 2024, 90% of corporate strategies will highlight information as a critical business asset and analytics as a crucial competency. Again, as a software engineer, it's your job to make sure all of the automational processes, all of the architecture, everything that a business needs is in place to capture this data and even help them manipulate it or show them how to place it so they can actually look at it. That's one of the most powerful parts of your job. Scrolling down more, most organizations, meaning 97%, believe that business process automation is crucial for the digital transformation. The demand for business process automation is seen within the following stats. 90% of employees feel burdened with repetitive and boring tasks that can be easily autom automated. 68% feel overloaded and feel like they have too much nonsense to handle on a daily, ba daily basis. And 81% feel like they're at a breaking point if they don't start tapping into automation. Again, these are the things that you could say, hey, listen, those small tasks that your employees are doing, your sales staff is doing, your servicing staff, what if we could automate 60% to 20% of their job, and that opens up more time for them to actually service clients. That opens up more time for them to actually sell. Let's take all of the nitty gritty details and repetitive tasks off their plate, like confirming appointments and all of those things, and let's put that and open that time up for them to be more productive and bring more to the business. It's not about you, by the way, firing people. It's about you being able to optimize more out of those employees and drive more revenue and generate more profit and margins for your business. Another global survey revealed that 74% of workforces would be impacted by the adoption of intelligence automation. So guys, what we're seeing here, there's several other stats I'd highly suggest looking into this. It's a magic, I don't know how to pronounce this, but you can see this right, right, up, right up here above. You can see here that if you're somebody looking to get into the digital transformation, if you're somebody wanting to leverage your mind to solve big problems, to build a meaningful career for yourself, 
even having the ability to work remotely, earn a lot of money, have an ungodly amount of freelance clients, earn passive income because you have people on retainers and you only need to spend three to five hours a month servicing them. If you want to figure out all of these things, you need to think beyond building some random SaaS app and more towards solving client problems that can help them with business automation, business products, all of these different things. That right there is the key to building your unique selling point, your ability to stand out, and much, much more. So later this week, this is what you can plan for. We're going to have Beanie on. She's our new director of uh, career coaching and partnerships. She's going to come on and talk to me about some LinkedIn strategies for networking and learning how to kind of third-party your way into these jobs because the the job applications are just going to get worse and worse and worse due to AI. The next aspect we'll be talking about this week is Peter will be coming on. We'll be talking about AI and a wide variety of other things. So this is what I really wanted this week's episode to be. Let's set a preface for this week. Let's prepare to crush this week. Let's understand the do's and the don'ts of the job search, of freelancing, all of these aspects. And most importantly, thank you so much for listening. We have a vision here to help you build a meaningful and fulfilling career from scratch to earn that six figures mark. We have a plan for doing that in every single, every single episode, breaking down, like I said, the do's and don'ts and understanding the obstacles of fear, to, or fear of laziness, of external forces and how to overcome those. So as long as you're tuning in, this is simply an aspect of making sure that you got the time, right? If you keep dedicating that time, you're eventually gonna get where you wanna go. That's it for episode 12 today. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. I cannot wait for the next episode. And don't forget, subscribe on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, wherever it is. And don't forget to reach out to me on Instagram. If you got any questions, we'll talk to you here soon.